Charles Augustin de Coulomb. Okay. This guy was the one who gave us a very famous law called as the Coulomb's law. And this Coulomb's law, he tried to figure it out by an instrument that he invented himself. He tried to figure out the value of the force that existed between two charged bodies. And on what factors do they depend upon? And very famously, we call that as Coulomb's law. Now, this instrument that you see right over here is called as Coulomb's torsion balance. Okay, It consists of some very simple parts. It has got, well, uh, two spheres as such. You can see you, there is another sphere over here. There is a scale, lid, a glass tube. There is a torsion fiber and torsion head. Now, what used to happen is that if you charge this sphere and this sphere, both of them, and both of them are having similar charges, like charges, then they are going to repel each other, right? They are going to repel each other. And if they are repelling each other, there will be a torsion, there will be a twist in the string that is connecting them, right? So you are supposed to measure that twist, you are supposed to measure that angle, and of course you know that this is proportional to the force, obviously, right? Okay. So by measuring this torsion, you are able to get an idea about the electrical force. So once they were both charged, you can see that there was a repulsion and you have a force scale on which you were able to measure the charge. All right. Now, this is a kind of a primitive experiment. Now, we are living in a modern era. So let's use some high technology things to get a same setup done in our own way and to measure actually on what factors do these forces, that is electrical forces of attraction and repulsion depends upon. All right. So we have a new setup where we have got two robotic hands and these robotic hands are going to measure, measure the value of force for us. Now, first thing first, if you see the charges over here are minus two and plus two which means one thing must be absolutely clear in your head that is the force that is going to exist between these two charges is it going to be attractive or repulsive for that you need to figure out that are they like charges or are they unlike charges so one is positive another one is negative what does it mean it means that the force is going to be attractive in nature all right okay so initially we start off with certain quantities like the value of the charges are minus 2 and plus 2. And we have kept it at a distance of 4R. All right. That is what we are starting. And you can see this part is measuring the value of the force. So both of them experience equal amount of attractive force. And we are calling them as F. All right. Okay. So let's begin the experiment. Let's start noting things down. So our first, our first column would be the value of the distance, the value of the charges Q1 and Q2 the value of the force and the relation. So initially we start off with very simple two charges. One is plus two, another is minus two, plus two and minus two. And we know that the force will be a force of attraction. The distance is 4R. And we want to figure out the relation that exists between all these things. All right. So to do that, we'll keep all the other quantities fixed and we are just going to change one of them. So if I change this value, that is charge, value of charge 2 that is q2 if i change it if i make it double then let's see what is the effect on the force so if you make this charge as 4 plus 4 which means you have doubled the charge this remains as it is all other things remain as it is but you see that there is a change in value of the force so when you doubled one of the charges when you made it two times the force also became two times the force also became two times right so that tells us that there is a kind of direct proportionality, isn't it? With which one? With this charge U2. So what do we observe and what do we write down for this particular observation? Well, D remains the same. The charge Q1 is same. same. And Q2, we have doubled it. What happens? The force also gets doubled, which means, which gives us a conclusion that F is directly proportional to Q2. No problem. Now, let's keep this one fixed and now let's change charge one. 
Let's change charge one and let's see what happens now. If you keep the second one fixed, that is Q2 fixed at four, and you're changing the charge one and you're making it half, all right? Which means initially it was minus two. Now I'm making it as minus one. Now what happens? So when it was minus two and four, we have seen that the force was two F. And now when you see, well, the force also becomes half of what it was. Initially it was 2F. Now if you change this value by half, the force also decreased by the same value, right? Which means it is also proportional to Q1, isn't it? So again, we'll note down our findings. So what we got that the distance is same. If I have this, I can see that F is directly proportional to Q1. So now, till now the conclusion is that the force that exists between the two charges is directly proportional to value Q2 and it is also directly proportional to the value of Q1. All right. Next is that what happens if I change the distance? So if you see, next case, if I change the distance and make the distance half of what it was initially, the value of the force becomes equal to, equal to four times four times. So you decrease it by half, the value became equal to four times. You go on doing experiments. So you decrease it by one third, the value becomes nine times. You decrease it by one fourth, the value becomes 16 times. The force increases 16 times. You decrease it further by one fifth, let us say, and the value, the value becomes equal to 25 times. So this is the trend that we saw, which means that this tells us that, see, if you're decreasing it by two, that is, if you're decreasing it by half, the value is becoming four times, right? Think about it. If you are decreasing it by one third, that is one by three, the value is equal to nine times. The value increases by nine times. So do you see a relation? Do you see a relation? Yes. The relation with the value of distance is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So now, we know the relation that exists between the force, the charge, and the distance. So we know from Coulomb's law, what we can say is that this F is directly proportional to the product of the two charges and is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. Now, if you remove this proportionality, you need to place a constant. So what you get is F is equal to K q1 q2 upon r square so this is the final formula for the magnitude of force now this is a formula that i want all of you to remember all right because this is a very important formula first thing next is that if the first charge or q1 is attracting the second charge there will be attractive force on 2 by 1 as well right okay so because if we consider one to be positive, another one to be negative. Of course, there is a force of attraction. So, A is attracting B and B is also attracting A, right? So, one is attracting two and two is also attracting one. We know that the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, all right? Yes, we'll also prove this, don't worry. But the important thing is this value of K. What is this value of K? Well, the value of K is what you have to remember, the value of k comes out to be equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Sir, how did you get the unit of k as Newton meter square per Coulomb square? Very simple. If you see force will be having a unit of Newton. If you cross multiply this, what do you get? F r square divided by q1 q2 is equal to k. Now, F is having a unit of Newton, R square, R is the distance, so unit of meter, so Newton meter square, Q1 will be Coulomb and Q2 will also will be Coulomb, so by Coulomb square, so this is how you get the unit, unit of K, all right? This is how you obtain the unit of K, correct? No problem? All right. So, you should remember one thing that the magnitude of the force, F is equal to K Q1 Q2 upon R square and the value of K for free space or air, you need to remember this as 9 into 10 to the power 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Very simple, easy. All right. 